Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. You have a martini glass. Imagine filling it with some amount of liquid. Imagine measuring the height between the bottom of the liquid and the top of the liquid. The question is when will the glass be closest to half full with liquid? Which of the following options do you think is true? Just try to guess, don't do any calculations. Is it 50% of the height? 60% of the height? 70% of the height? 80% of the height? 90% of the height? Or is the answer dependent on the angle of the glass? That is, you can't determine when the glass will be closest to half full. It will depend whether the glass is going to be narrow or whether it's going to be a wider glass. The percentage of the height will be dependent on the actual shape. So the question is, which answer is true? When will the glass be closest to half full? Can you give an answer for one of those percentages of heights, or can it not be determined because it depends on the shape of the glass? I want to give a shout out to QMath and Data Genetics who covered this topic previously. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. This problem had stumped me, and I was curious if other people were able to figure it out or if they would be as puzzled as I was. So I put a poll on YouTube. Which glass is closest to half full of liquid? No calculations allowed. Just guess quickly based on the images. 60% height, 70% height, 80% height, 90% height. Unfortunately, YouTube only allows for four options. I couldn't put the fifth option of cannot be determined. So how did people respond? I was very amazed that over 100,000 votes came in in just two days. 60% of height got a total of 8% of the votes. 70% of height got 60% of the votes. This is what I would have thought the answer was, and most people also thought this is where the glass is half full. 80% of height got only 28% of the votes, and this in fact was the correct answer. Now also judging by some of the comments, some people were actually doing the calculations, so they weren't playing fair. So you could actually say the number of people who knew this before doing the calculations would be lower. Our intuition is not to think about the correct answer. About 3% of people said 90% of the height, which was maybe overthinking it that the illusion is too big. But in any case, only 28% of people gave the correct answer. So this is a puzzling phenomenon, and it's something that you can have a little fun with. Imagine you're at a bar and you get a glass that seems to be almost completely full. How full is the glass actually? Well, you can do a fun little trick. Fill another glass to exactly the same height. Then take the second glass and you can pour it entirely into the first glass. So this shows that the first glass and the second glass were only about half Full. Now this isn't to say the restaurant is cheating, it would be entirely impractical to walk around with a full martini glass, you're going to spill the liquid everywhere, but in any case, you're actually getting a lot less liquid than you initially thought just by the height of the liquid. So why is that? Here are the surprising mathematical calculations. A glass that is filled to 50% of its height is only 12.5% full by volume. To put that into plain English, you would need a shocking eight glasses filled to this level to be equal to one glass filled all the way to the top. A glass that is filled 60% by height is only 21.6% full. It would take about five glasses filled to this height to approximately be equal to one glass filled to the top. A glass that is filled to 70% of its height is only 34.3% full. It would take about three glasses filled to this height to equal one glass filled to the top. You have to fill the glass to about 80% of its height to be about half full. This is when two glasses filled to this level will approximately be equal to one glass filled to the top. A glass that is filled to 90% of its height is still only 72.9% full. 
That means more than one fourth of the glass is still empty, even though it seemingly looks full. To put it in other words, you would need a glass filled to this height, and you could still fit a glass filled to about 60% of its height to be equal to one glass filled all the way to the top. This is quite amazing, but where did these numbers come from? Why is a glass that has a liquid at 80% of its height approximately half full? We need to go deeper into the mathematical calculation. The vessel of the martini glass closely resembles the shape of a right-angled cone. So we're going to need to know the volume of the right-angled cone in order to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and refresh some of our elementary geometry formulas. A right-angled cone is determined by two parameters. It has a radius of its base and it has a height going from the top to the base. So let's call these capital R and capital H. The volume of the cone will be equal to one third multiplied by pi multiplied by the square of capital R multiplied by capital H. Now imagine we have a smaller cone that's inside this larger cone. This smaller cone will also have its dimensions and we can call its radius lowercase r and its height as lowercase h. So the volume of this smaller cone will be lowercase v is equal to one third multiplied by pi multiplied by lowercase r squared multiplied by lowercase h. So how do we relate the two volumes of these cones? Notice in the smaller cone, we have a right triangle or we have one leg that's r and another leg that's h. In the larger cone, we're going to have another right triangle where the two legs are the radius and the height and this triangle will be similar. So we must have the ratio of the corresponding sides will be equal. So we have the ratio of the heights is equal to the ratio of the radii. We now take the ratio of the volumes. So we're going to get some cancellations. The one third terms will cancel and the pi terms will cancel. So we have the following formula. We can now take out the ratio of the radii, which will be a square term, and then we multiply it by the ratio of the heights. So let's continue simplifying. We know that the ratio of the radii is exactly the same thing as the ratio of the heights. So we can substitute this term here for the ratio of the heights. We then will simplify and we get that the ratio of the volumes is equal to the cube of the ratio of the heights. And that's precisely what we want to show. So let's just do some interpretation of this formula. Lowercase v divided by uppercase v will be equal to the percentage of the volume of the large cone. We then have the ratio of heights will be the percentage of the height. So this formula is the percentage of the volume is equal to the cube of the percentage of the height. And notice it does not depend on the radius value or the angle of the cone because we have these similar triangles that relates the radii and the heights. So what we can do with this formula is we can think about a graph. Imagine we have a graph where we have the x-axis is the percentage of the height going from 0% to 100%. And then the y-axis is the percentage of the volume going from 0% to 100%. So this formula will end up with a graph that looks like this. We have a cubic equation. Let's now solve for the percentage of the height at which the glass is 50% full by volume. We have the equation that 50% of the volume is equal to the cube of the percentage of the height. Let x represent a variable for the percentage of the height. Now 50% is equal to 1 half. This gives the equation 1 half is equal to x cubed. We can take the cube root of both sides to get that 1 divided by the cube root of 2 is equal to x. This works out to 0.794, and that translates into 79.4% of the height. That's when the glass will be 50% of its volume. Let's get some further insight about how the percentage of volume changes with the percentage of height. So when we have no height, of course we have no volume. As we gradually increase the height, we're going to gradually increase the volume, but the height is going to grow much faster than the volume is growing. It's going to take to about 80% of the height in order to get 
50% of the volume. So it's quite an amazing thing. We can play around with this and see how the height relates to the volume. So it's a completely counterintuitive phenomenon and it's something that we experience every time we go to the restaurant or bars. Don't just trust your intuition. It's really good to understand the math. What an interesting puzzle. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.